Hi everyone, today we are going to learn about Archimedes principle in 15 minutes. Are you ready? Okay, let's start our class now. Before we continue our lesson, let us know the outcome that we want to obtain from today's lesson, which is at the end of this, you should be able to describe the relationship between buoyant force and the difference in liquid pressure at different depths for a submerged object. Next, you should be able to relate the balance of force with the state of flotation of an object in a fleet. And lastly, you should be able to communicate about application of Archimedes principle in daily life. Now, let's take a look. Have you ever wondered how is it that an extremely heavy ship made of metal floats on water, but a tiny piece of metal like a nail easily sink into it? Why? Why does it happen? To answer questions like this, we need to understand Archimedes principle. So, what is Archimedes principle? Archimedes principle state that an object which is partially or fully immersed in a fluid will experience a buoyant force equal to the weight of the fluid to split. We can take a simple example to understand this principle. Let's take a look at this diagram. A 5 kg solid object is suspended by a spring balance and the balance shows the rate of 5 kg. What will happen if we immerse the object in the water? Let's take a look. After we immerse the object in the water, you will see that the reading will be a lower number as compared to the previous one. Why is that? It is because of the buoyant force. Yes, because the buoyant force acting on the object. And you also have noticed that some water was displaced. Now, in this context, we can say that the weight of this displaced water is equal to the magnitude of the buoyant force acting on the object. That is the Archimedes principle. Simply put that when an object is immersed fully or partially in fluid, the upward force applied by the fluid on the object is the same as the weight of the fluid displaced by the water. How does the buoyant force exist? The buoyant force is the force acting upward on an object immersed in a liquid when there is a pressure difference between the lower surface and the upper surface of the object. Let's take a look at this diagram. When a cylinder is submerged in the water, there is a pressure acting on it, which we have learned in the previous class that an object that is submerged in the water will experience the pressure in liquid, which is the pressure is increased when the depth of the liquid increases. Thus, the top surface of the cylinder has a lower pressure, while the bottom surface of the cylinder has a higher pressure. And since there is a difference in pressure at, on the cylinder, there will be a force exert from the higher pressure to the lower pressure and this force is what we call the buoyant force. So let's get back to our question before. Why the large ship can float in the water while the near sink in the water? By now you should be able to answer this question right? Okay. The iron nail sink in the water because of the weight of the water displaced by the nail is less than its own weight. However, the constructing ship follow the Archimedes principle where a large portion of ship are keep hollow from the inside that maintains their density less than the water density. Hence, the weight of the ship becomes less than the weight of the water displaced by it and the buoyant force of magnitude equal to the displaced water exert on the ship and the ship floats on the surface of the water. In this part, 
we will look at the relationship between the equilibrium of force and the state of flotation of an object in a fit. Since when an object is submerged in the water, there are two forces acting on the object, which is the weight of the object due to the gravity and the buoyant force. We want to know if the object is floating, what happened to the equilibrium of the force and the weight of the object? And if it's not, either the object is rising upward or downward, what happened to the buoyant force and weight? Okay, now let's take a look at the first situation. The diagram shows the object is floating in the water. When the object is floating, it is means the object is under the equilibrium state, where weight and buoyant force is balanced or the magnitude of the buoyant force and weight is equal. Thus, the resultant force act on object is equal to zero. This is happened so that the object does not move upward or downward, so the force is balanced and the object is still stationary. And as we can see, the object brown and green is submerged partially and fully in the water. Why it is different? It is because the density of the object is different. If it is less dense, it will float partially like a green one. And if the object is more dense, it will float fully in the water. Now let's take a look at situation 2. As you can see in the diagram, when you release the object in the water, it accelerates downward. This means that the weight of the object greater than the buoyant force. Thus, the resultant force is downward. So this force is unbalanced because the object moves downward with an acceleration. Whereas in this situation 3, the object moves upward. This shows the buoyant force is greater than weight of the object in the magnitude. Thus, the resultant force is upward and the force is unbalanced. Object move upward with an acceleration of A. Next, we will gonna look at application of Archimedes principle in our daily life. The first application of Archimedes principle in our daily life is submarine. Okay, submarine. Submarine can be submerged into the water and can also float on the surface of the water by maintaining the density of the displaced water and submarine. This density are maintained by the two important components present in the submarine. They are the compressed tank and the ballast tank. If we fill the ballast tank with water, it results in a greater density of the submarine than the density of the space water. Hence, the submarine dive into the water. Whereas, if this water is expelled out from the ballast tank with the help of the compressed tank, then the average density of the submarine becomes lesser than the density of the displaced water, and the submarine floats on the surface. That is how the submarine works. So let's take a look at the second application of Archimedes principle in our daily life. The second one is beach ball. Have you ever go to the beach and play with a ball? I guess yes, because I do. So how does beach ball apply the Archimedes principle? Okay, beach ball are filled with air only, so they have a very small weight, hence they do not displace much water. Since they displace less water, the buoyant force acting on them is also very less. But when we try to push the ball into the water, the buoyant force acting on it increases, which does not let the beach ball sink into the water and it floats on the water surface. The next application is ship and pencil line. As we have discussed before, a ship floats on the surface of the sea because the volume of water displaced by the ship is enough to have a weight equal to the weight of the ship. A ship is constructed in a way so that the ship is hollow to make the overall density of the ship lesser than the sea water. 
Therefore, the boil force acting on the ship is large enough to support the weight. The density of the seawater varies with the location, like Atlantic Ocean, Pacific Ocean, and etc. They have different temperature and different density of water. The pencil line marked on the body of the ship act as a guideline to ensure that the ship is loaded within the safety limit. A ship submerged lower in fresh water as the fresh water density is lesser than seawater. Ship will float higher in cold water as cold water has a relatively higher density than warm water. So the pencil line is important in safety guideline. This is the last application of Archimedes principle in our daily life that we will discuss in this lesson. Until now, we have discussed about the Archimedes principle of an object in the water which is fluid and sinking. But we also should know that air is also a fluid. So hot air balloon is applicable for Archimedes principle. So how does hot air balloon work? The balloon rises in the air when the weight of the air surrounding the balloon is greater than its own weight. Whereas if the weight of the balloon is greater, it will start descending. When the weight of the surrounding air and hot air balloon is equal, it becomes stationary. The density between the air and the balloon is controlled by varying the amount of hot air in the balloon. Before we end this class, I have a question for you. The first question is, the green below shows a wood block float in the water. Determine the boil force acting on the wood block. So take a while and we will discuss this later. Okay, since the object float in the water, thus the object is in, in the equilibrium state, right? Thus, the weight of the object is equal to the buoyant force. So, the answer is 25 Newton. Since the weight is 25 Newton, so the buoyant force is also 25 Newton. It's easy, right? So, let's take a look for the second question. Now, let's take a look for the question 2. Object P, Q, and R is made from the same material. Compare the buoyant force acting on the each object. Okay, I will give you 5 minutes to think about it and I will ask two students to answer this question. Okay, have you got the answer? Yes, it's correct. Since the object R is occupied more space in the water, it disperses more water than object P and Q. And we know that the dispersed water or displaced water is equal to the buoyant force. So the buoyant force acting on the object R is greater, while the buoyant force acting on the object P is the smallest. So let's look at this. Buoyant force of R is greater than buoyant force act on the object Q and the buoyant force act on object Q is greater than buoyant force act on object P. This is because the object P occupies the smallest space in the water. It's great that all of you can understand this. I hope we can do better in the next class. By now, what you should know. First, you should know the relationship between the buoyant force and the difference in the liquid pressure at the different depth for a submerged object. Second, you should know the relation of balance of force with the state of flotation of an object in a fluid. And the last one, you should know the application of Archimedes in our daily life. If you have any question or you don't understand anything, let me know and we will discuss about Archimedes principle later on in our next class. So that is all from me for today. Thank you for your attention and see you next time.